So this week I was making a pack for March of Robots, which is happening all March, like it does every year. And I started making these chain links and I thought it would be a great video just to give you an idea of uh, following up on last week's video about how we do uh, curves in Nomad. It would be good to just have a look at how we would make a chain link. So here we go. So it's March again and we're making robots all this month. So March of Robots is one of my favorite yearly challenges. And while I was making this pack of little robot parts um, to use as almost like a kit bash here in Nomad, I made some chains. And then I thought, well, last week we did how to use a curve. So here's a live example of how to use a curve in Nomad to make a chain link. So here we go. So we're in Nomad, we come up to the top and we go add and we'll make ourselves a torus. So come along here and hit torus and there we have our first little shape. So we want to put wireframe on down at the bottom here and then we want to go and edit that before we do anything else. So we come into the top and go to topology and then drag that down to give us a lot less topology to play with. Something like that would be a, a, a good start. We're basically making one chain link here. So all we need to do now is we don't need to mess with the other settings just yet. But what would be good is to change the inner radius a little bit. So we want to make it a little bit fatter. Now that's just a donut or a ring. Now we want that extended. So all we need to do is make sure perspective is off. I want to snap it to the front by hitting this little view cube at the, 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 the top here. Um, and then what we want to do is validate that, which means that we can now work on, on the, um, the chain link. And we want to come down to SEL mask and then look over here to rectangle and then just drag across like that. So we've masked half of the shape. Then with gizmo on, just move that up. And that gives us um, the shape of the chain link. Now, as it happens, because there was no split across the middle, that's actually a little bit compressed at the top. So I always find it's good to do a tiny bit like that. Just, just bring it out a little bit like that. Clear the mass by holding it and striking up, and that clears it completely. And then what you might want to do is just go up one subdivision, something like that. And then you can delete the lower one. And that is your first, um, basically your first chain link. So change the uh, settings here. So roughness, you want to bring it right down, and metalness all the way up, and then force paint all. And there you go for your first chain link. So um, you can make them fatter, you can make, you know, mess around with it before you get to the point where you validate if, if you want. And you can actually subdivide it a lot higher, but I don't do that just yet. Um, the reason is I want it really low poly until I've set it all and, and finished my, my, my link. So take that link, snap it to the front again if needed, and then come up to the top here and go under scene, go um, clone. So you've got two of them now, and then you want to move the second one up to about there and then you want to rotate it 90 degrees round if you want to be sure it's exactly 90 tap in the gizmo up there and where it says 87.22 which was your guess or my guess in this case you want to switch that over to 90 and that snap snaps it directly to 90. so you've now got two chain links and they're basically um, in a nice little row ready to be put onto a curve. So an easy way to do this now is to join the two of them together. So select them both with a little tick, hit join, and then put the grid on so we can see where, where we are in the real world. And generally speaking, the curve's gonna follow this, which is the Y, the green up. So what I'm gonna do is instead of rotating the model, I'm gonna rotate the pivot point. So I'm going to tap like that so I'm snapped to the front again. I'm going to hit pivot and I'm going to rotate the pivot 90 degrees. It doesn't really matter if that's exact for this one or not. And then the easy bit now is just come up here and go add and down to curve. And now you've got a curve that basically stretches out like so. You can keep it snapped to the front if that really helps. Um, like so, and you can even lock that if you want, if you don't know how to do that now. So you tap it on the front and then hold it down. You see this little lock icon? That means you can't go off that now. So you can move this out as far as you want now, move it anywhere you want. So say, for example, we just took it there as an arbitrary uh, length. And then up here in the count, we just drag that up until we've got a nice little selection like that. So you, you just keep going with that and you, you, you can tap the number in if you want. But the easiest thing to do is just drag it until it looks right. Now, if that's looking right, unlock it. So you've now got it. Take that grid off. We don't need that. 
that. And now you've got one chain that follows this completely. Uh, that's no use because it's not a proper chain, is it? So we need to we need to put some brakes in it. So again, always keep snapping to the front. I always like to do that. And then we'll put just one brake in it for now. And you can see there what that will do. But that's that's stretching it a little bit. So we would probably want to put a number of brakes in it. So uh, instead of going one per link, I'm going to just going to do a couple to show you. The more you put in, the more adaptive it will be, um, like so. And then basically that will give you everything you want in your chain link. And if you if you look at it like this, that's going in different angles now. And that generally is enough to follow. It's not quite as good as something like Cinema 4D's Cloner or Cloner Longer Spline or anything like that, but it's more than enough. And especially if you're careful with the amount of um, points that you put in, you'll, you'll get it looking exactly how you want it to. Again, don't expect any kind of blender or Cinema 4D level um, uh, you know the, the splines are, it's not going to work quite as well yet um as something like that but it certainly gives you enough to work with to give you some really visually stunning um chain links for your if you want to make something like spawn then hey go ahead uh, this is absolutely perfect for that so have a go mess with the sizes mess with you can even mess with something like this radius here now i wouldn't because that gives you a way to change the size independently along the chain and that doesn't really happen with chain links so this is probably one example example where the first of the radius settings is right so it's the first dot on there so have a go at that and see what you can come up with that involves using a chain link i hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give us a thumbs up because it does help us to get in front of other people we're going to do a lot more videos on a lot more software starting from next week so this is probably the last of the nomad ones for a while so look out for all the new stuff that's coming and i hope you enjoy it have a great week